Hi, everyone, and welcome to People Potential with Amanda. Thank you for listening in today. I'm your host, Amanda Flacing, and I'll be bringing on various experts to discuss empowering individuals and organizations to achieve their full potential. Hello, and welcome to another episode of People Potential with Amanda. Today, I am privileged to have Stefano Di Lolo on with me, and he is the VP of Leadership Development and Innovation at Papillon MDC. Stefano, thank you so much for joining me. And let's just start out. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. What does leadership development and innovation really mean? Great question. Uh, first off, thank you for, for having me. Look, I get really excited when I talk about this stuff. Because to me, when I think of leadership development, I think that this is what every organization should be striving for from every individual, not just the individuals who have positions or titles, but rather every single person has this ability to develop into an incredible leader. And when you have incredible leaders together in one space, well, then you have a great thing because now you have a team of leaders and every organization will prosper I have yet to find an organization that has told me that having a team of leaders has not been a positive thing for them. And so for me, it's really, I mean, it's the DNA of successful organizations. It's what keeps us going. And of course, if you're going to strive to have real great leadership development, you need to also have innovation and you need to think about how are we doing things in innovative and unconventional ways so that will stretch as leaders. So that will stretch as organizations. So that's really what I'm about. That's what I work with an incredible organization of teams that um, they really do practice, you know, what they preach. And it's, it feels great to be a part of this organization. And, um, and so this is what we do. We help organizations and individuals with their leadership development. Of course, that includes executive coaching. And, uh, and we have a great time working with leaders to get there. Amazing. So this actually flows well into my first question, which is what is your vision of a great leader or great leaders? What are great leaders to you? So this is an incredible question because often leaders end up in their positions of leadership, not necessarily because they displayed the skills that one would associate with a great leader, but rather because they were really great problem solvers or really great experts at what they do. And so of course they move up the corporate ladder, suddenly they're in a position where they can now lead. And quite honestly, we don't always know how to do it. You know, I know that my first leadership role many, many years ago, I didn't have a manual that came with how to be a leader. And it left me scratching my head and wondering what I was doing wrong. And so to me, a great leader, if I'm going to narrow it down to one sentence, is a leader that knows exactly how to create other leaders surrounding him or her. That essentially is to me what makes a leader, you know, uh, someone that really is able to see someone and be able to detect potential for growth and development rather than just their expertise, the technical things that they're good at. That's what I would define as true leadership. That's really interesting. Thank you for that answer. And that's, you know, not the typical, not the typical answer. So I love it. Um, so how do they get to this great leader state status um, where, where they can develop others and see their leadership potential? So do you start by identifying uh, and bridging gaps or do you focus more on their strengths? You know, it would be wrong not to consider strengths along the way, you know, we're each on a journey, but of course we each show up with our own abilities, with our own strengths, with our own weaknesses. And I'm not sure if they should even be called weaknesses, rather opportunities for improvement and growth. Yeah, absolutely, areas of um, development. Of, of course, and, and, and you don't want to ignore what someone is showing up with, especially if it's a really powerful, great trait that they have. And so certainly we make sure to integrate that, but really it does come down to, okay, so now that we are in a position of leadership, what do we need to work on in order to make sure that the people around us are growing as a result of us being here? You know, when you're a manager, you can lead, 
But when you're a manager, really you're using your position, your title relative to that of others so that you can serve them, so that you can help them achieve certain goals by using your own respective title. And there's nothing wrong with management. Often people seem to think that I'm kind of elevating leadership versus the management. Management has its role. It's a very powerful one. And then there's mentoring, which is often what people assume we're talking about when we're talking about, you know, stepping more into a leadership role and kind of coaching people. And that's where you're now opening yourself up for sharing. And your goal is to try to inspire those people to move forward. And you're sharing information, but of course, you're not necessarily attaching yourself to it. You're trying to align what you're sharing with what the person is trying to do. And then, of course, come, comes coaching. To me, that is really aligned with leadership. And this is where you are quite literally looking for the opportunities of growth in a person, but you're also trying to get them to recognize what skills, what strengths they have so that they can leverage those in order to you know, get those answers, to get unstuck, to move forward. And you know, I really believe that if you're a leader, you must believe that people are whole, that they're resourceful, that they're capable, that they're really creative actually at finding most solutions to when they get stuck. So leadership certainly isn't teaching. It's not showing or pointing the way. You can certainly have that vision as a leader for your organization, but it's really allow, about allowing those people to grow so that they can move into that you know, direction so that we could do this together. Uh, mm-hmm. So, so it, there's this beauty in building up an individual but so that the organization also and the teams can actually prosper because we're all collectively growing and, uh, yeah. and it's not easy to get, but you know what, that's why, that's why we work hard at it. And so it's like running a marathon. You don't get up one morning and start running a marathon. You have to start somewhere. And so I believe in those baby steps and step number one that I always preach about almost always, I'd say, start with communication. It really goes a long way. If we can focus on how we communicate, it defines how we lead. It defines, you know, what we convey to people that we're actually listening for, what we're thinking about, how we identify situations. And it's, imp- it's important to really, you know, walk away from a conversation having left an impact on that person. You know, a conversation should be productive, but it should all also leave an impact. And so that's step number one. You know, if you can wake up every day and say, how am I going to have conversations that leave an impact? You're already like, I won't say halfway there, but you're off to a really great start. So actually this flows really well into my next question also. I mean, this <laughs> conversation is just <laughs> going great. Great, um, great flow. <laughs> so, so if that's step number one and going back to that manual that you would have liked to have as a new leader, um, mm-hmm. if you had to write a manual for new leaders, what would the five tips be that you would give to those new leaders? Wow, that's a really great question. You know, first off, before we even, we often focus on, you know, the words that we speak as leaders. And when we picture a leader, you know, we picture that soloist at the front, kind of leading the crowd. And, you know, if we really look at history, most great achievements were actually rarely the work of a soloist, but really the work of a collective, um, of an ensemble. I love that word because it's, it's the same word in English and French. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I say step number one is not the cliche of, you know, listen more than you speak. That's the cliche we often hear when it comes to leadership. But rather, I would say active listening is tip number one. How we listen is something we take for granted, often because we've had no formal training. And how we listen really will determine Um, well, first of all, what we're listening for and how we're thinking about situations and in turn, how we then communicate. So step number one, active listening. Step number two, I would say, is how we ask questions rather than how we ask people to, you know, solve problems. We're really great at solving problems and we like to shout out the answers, but rather I say, focus on asking such powerful questions that it'll stimulate intellectual sparring. It's going to get that other person to think in new and unconventional ways. So definitely questioning. I often say listening like a coach and questioning like a coach to me are two big powerful um, uh, steps. I think leadership behaviors. 
being able to identify the leadership behaviors that lead to a really great leadership culture are also key. And we're often really great at identifying what's not working, but we forget that we should be also identifying like what is working and what is working so well that we need to have this insight somewhere, that we need to educate everybody around us that, well, this is the way you do things here, you know? Um, so there's certainly this leadership behavior aspect. I also feel uh, if I'm going to go into, I think I'm at four now, I'd say four is an awareness of ourselves and how we may get triggered and what's important to us and maybe how our core values and beliefs, you know, uh, tend to sometimes sway us in different directions. And I think that's a really powerful awareness. If you're going to lead other people, you should know where you're coming from. Yes, for sure. And Self-awareness. Self-awareness. And you want, you know, you want to be congruent with what you say and how you behave. And sometimes we react and we realize later that maybe we weren't being congruent to what we were thinking or we behaved a certain way for maybe the wrong reasons. And I would say step number five is tying all those together. <laughs> That's the, the, the tying those strings together so that you basically can do this consistently and remind yourself to check in on that regularly. So making sure you're practicing them, like review, like, am I doing the first four steps and then start all over again? Right. Because sometimes people are like, how can I ask better questions? And so in order to ask better questions, sometimes you have to actually go back to the act of listening and say, well, what kind of information were you listening for? And so sometimes you have to kind of make sure that you're tying all those elements together. And does this align with our leadership behaviors? And am I checking in with myself before I enter a conversation? What's my intention for that conversation? What am I really after in this moment? What's my mindset at? Am I stepping in as a manager in this moment? Am I stepping in as a mentor or am I actually stepping in as a coach and leader? You know, these are the kind of things that we need to kind of consider daily. And I mean, the active listening, like from uh, at remote, like at a distance, you have so many distractions. Not everyone has a great office or they have messages coming in. Uh, it's so important, like when you're meeting with your team and you're the leader, like you really need to be present, be fully engaged and, and be listening. So I love that you brought that up as uh, number one, because it is a pet peeve of mine. Like you can tell when people are doing other things and <laughs> you're trying to explain something. And, and it's not that I blame them because it's so difficult with all these, uh, your inbox is pinging, your teams or your other, like your messaging, your Slack. It's, uh, it, it takes a lot of skill and practice, but it's definitely something important to focus on. Absolutely. Um, my final question for you is, uh, let's move in another direction. I know you have a lot of experience in innovation, creativity, design thinking, uh, mm -hmm. in your current work and your previous work. Um, do you think these are important skills that leaders should develop? And if so, how could they develop these soft skills? Yeah, I do. I do think they're crucial, but I think that they're not crucial on an individual level as the leader. I truly feel that they're crucial in the sense that you need to make sure that that innovative, creative culture is actually being shared and built together. And um, I worry about organizations. In fact, I worry about a world without, you know, that creativity and that uh, innovation aspect because the world is changing as quickly as it possibly can. And we need to make sure that we can adapt and that we can be flexible. And so I always really stress us to how we need to constantly question the way we've done things and how can we do them differently? And of course, how can we do them differently for the greater good so that things actually improve? And of course, usually I put human beings and behavior and people at the forefront. Um, so it's absolutely important for, I think, a leader. In fact, I think it's difficult to lead without having, first off, as, a, as an individual, this ability to think on your feet and be creative and change things and refine the way you're working and, and communicating and the way that you're leading your team meetings and really always constantly looking to optimize, which to me is what innovation is about. I know that term gets used quite you know, loosely. Yeah. Optimization it's, of everything. It's really maybe a better word in the sense because, you know, often people will argue, well, what are we really innovating? And so, okay, maybe we're not reinventing the wheel, but if you can improve 
just a fragment of how you either interact or work together or generate creative ideas, then that will go a long way. Could you imagine how that will basically accumulate and how that will impact you know, the culture by the end of a week alone? And so I often really preach, quite literally, I preach about creativity and innovation and the importance of bringing people together to also have people involved in how we change and how we improve and how we innovate. Because it's much harder to have someone standing at the top and telling people. Again, that to me moves away from leadership. We can have a vision and that vision needs to be kind of shared with people, but then we all need everybody's buy-in. And the way you get people's buy-in is to say, let's do this together. Let's generate ideas together, which is why I will preach about the importance of brainstorming in almost every organization I visit. Even in industries where people don't seem to think they need to brainstorm for anything. They're like, well, we're not in a, we're not in one of those kind of creative industries. And I have yet to find an industry that's not creative. I mean, it's scary if we're thinking we're not creative in whatever it is, whatever discipline or industry, there is always room to improve. So you can tell how much that means to me. I come from a very creative and innovative space. I began my career 20 plus years ago, which puts a date on me there, <laughs> but uh, in, in, in product design. And so I started my career quite literally trying to find better ways of doing things. And so now I let that seep into leadership development and how do we basically you know, innovate when it comes to just the way we basically interact and move forward together. I love it. It's also in, within your five tips is constantly making sure you're doing it. How could I do it better? Am I doing everything? Questioning yourself. And uh, I totally agree with the power of a great brainstorming session and the power of collaboration instead of control. So, so many golden nuggets in this uh, interview. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today, Stefano. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. I, I get so excited. I could go on forever. That's how much I love this stuff. And I'm hoping that people can hear it because it is a great thing, actually. Uh, when you're open to this kind of thinking, it, it really does change the way you perceive work and life. And you actually can see how it seeps into everything that you do. And uh, that's kind of my, my goal. That's what keeps me waking up in the morning and excited uh, to help people. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for joining us on this episode of People Potential with Amanda. I appreciate each and every listen and view. You can find the show notes on the Success Finder blog and be sure to follow us on LinkedIn and subscribe to our newsletter for all kinds of value-added content. Until next time. Stay curious.